board. So I can basically answer any questions you guys have or I can just work on development or I can see if there are any questions on like the Twitter or anything like that and we can can work like that or I mean pretty much whatever you guys want to do I'm still really new to this so yeah let me know if you if you have any questions or anything you'd want me to go over any basic ideas uh, yeah let me know so Okay. All right, so I guess I'll just start talking about what I was working on last weekend. So this is a game that I've been, it's been in my mind for a while now. It's had a bunch of different variations. None of them really felt right. This is the first one that started to feel okay for me. Um, I'm calling it Kitty Quark because I have a, this idea of what I want the main character to be. This little, like, I don't know, school-age girl who's trying to prove herself. Um, and I want her to have all these different enemies that she's fighting, different bosses. And the bosses all have different abilities that will change the game board in some way or another. So, currently, here's what it looks like. So, you'd have your player up here your enemy here, health bars, you'd have a pause button in the middle, and then you'd have little spell cards down here that you can use after you've collected mana. And the pieces all represent something. So like the purple ones are money, the red ones are straight damage to your enemy, and then the orange, blue, and green ones represent different kinds of mana. So the blue ones would be water mana, red or orange ones are fire mana, and then the green ones would be earth mana, and you'd have different spells that you can use that mana for. And as your player's in the bottom corner, you see how the move counter goes down. So rather than manipulating objects directly, you would be um, moving your player around on the board. And then as you move your player around on the board, you would make matches. And then once you're out of moves, those matches would register, everything would collapse, refill, and collapse and refill until it's done. And then you'd be able to spend your mana that you just earned on spells or whatnot. So I thought that this would give a bit more strategy to it. So like um, rather than, I mean, there is still strategy in a match three game. Rather than just making the match though, there's the extra player positioning. And then like maybe one of the enemies or bosses could move your player around in the scene, like swap your player with some other piece so that it could mess with your strategy or you could have like an ice themed boss that would um, maybe randomly freeze blocks near your player so that you can only follow a certain path so that it would add all of these like extra dimensions to it so yeah that's the idea I'm gonna really quickly make a just a quick statement on discord I'm live now. Feel free to ask questions or feel free to ask questions or stop by and say hi. Okay, so that's kind of where I left off is I was just I got the movement implemented and I got the I got it to recognize when there are matches and destroy the matches, but I didn't get it to collapse the columns or refill. So, oh yeah, there is one thing I wanna go over though really quickly. So one of the things that was asked by Ed Den Gaming in the Patreon was if I could cover how to make the NPC face you when you're having a conversation with them. So currently, I'm just gonna demonstrate this with my, this is like my preview version of it. Currently uh, in the scene, if you, grab your game object here and if I just drag this into so the NPC is still facing whatever direction they were facing before you came up to them so what we this is actually way simpler than you think it is so on my actual NPC object let me open this up 
Oh, I didn't mean to open up the sprite. We wanted to open up the NPC movement script. Um, pretty much all you have to do is find a direction vector between the NPC and the player, and then set the hey there Tyrex, um, and then set the NPC to be facing that direction. So you you'd set you do that by setting the last move. Uh, Tyrax, I know that you're one of the ones who's hounded me about my inability to do version control, so I made myself like five notes today that I'm absolutely going to update my Git and make sure I have a license, you know, everything on my Git repository. So just wanted to let you know that I was I was thinking about that today. <laughs> I'm I'm really, really bad about version control in general and Git in particular. Okay, so it looks like I've opened multiple versions of Visual Studio. Um, so anyway, uh, what I was doing here is I was just taking a look at how to implement it so that the NPC faces the player, because that was one of the questions I got from, I think it was Ed, Dead, Ed Den Gaming on my Patreon. So, all right. My Visual Studio is being a little weird this morning, which is par for the course for Visual Studio. I have a very squeaky chair too. Yes, I, well, no, actually, I haven't used Visual Studio since the last time I did something and it looks like, like my autocomplete isn't fixed. Thank you for asking, I totally forgot about that. And last time I streamed and I did Unity stuff, Ugh, okay, um, now you already told me what to do to fix it, so uh, if I remember correctly, I need to go into Edit, Preferences, External Tools, I'm going to set this to Open by File Extension, and then I think I have to set it back to Visual Studio. Maybe. Thank you for reminding me about that, Tyrax. I also, I tried to make it so that now I'm uh, I'm streaming with lower latency, but it seemed like last time I streamed, it was still about 40 seconds between when I did something and when you guys saw it, so I'm not quite sure. All right, so let's restart Visual Studio here. If I remember correctly, the link that you sent me said to do this, to deassociate it and then reassociate it and then restart it. If this doesn't work, I think I can look for a newer version of the Unity tools really quickly. Yeah, there probably are a lot of different causes. Yeah, okay, it's not. Oh no, okay, it is recognizing stuff. Okay, cool. So autocomplete should work now. All right, so what we want to do is bounds contains temp moving and then the on trigger enter sets moving to false the other thing that we're going to want on trigger enter to do is to orient the uh, npc to the player so void face player and then what we want to do I want to know where the player is. So I'm going to make a little vector three, vector three player position, and I'm going to default it to vector three, zero, zero, zero. Uh, new vector three. There we go. All right, so if I save that then I won't have this, at least I have a, an actual assigned value for it. So uh, to face the player, I'm going to set player position equals other dot transform dot position. All right, and then I'm gonna create a temporary vector three temp and then that's going to be equal to player position minus 
transform.position. So this let's comment stuff as we go. Create a temporary vector three story uh, difference between positions. And then after we store the player position, we want to, or not the player position, but the difference between the positions. Um, we want to, I think, normalize and then round it. Temp dot normalize. And then temp dot x equals mathf dot round temp dot x and temp dot y mathf dot round temp dot y I'm not used to using this microphone with this computer. Am I am I talking too loudly or too quietly for anybody? Or is everybody just happy to <laughs> watch me just, just do stuff? I don't know. Okay, anyway. Um and then we want to say our okay, so we're updating the animation. I want to do direction equals temp. And then update animation. I don't know if this is going to do it or not. We'll have to find out. So face player. All right, so let's save that. <laughs> and here I said I was going to Will this fire subroutine get called when on trigger enter is fired? Yeah, that's the idea, is that we're only calling it the once so that we're not, like the the NPC isn't constantly trying to find out where the player is. Where are you now? Where are you now? Where are you now? It only needs to know when the player enters the trigger. At least that's my thought. Um, let's see how it goes. So if we go back here, let's hit play. And this is assuming I did anything right, um, which is a big assumption, especially on a Saturday morning. <laughs> well, it's morning for me. I don't know where it, what time it is for you guys. Um, all right, so if I go to my scene here, I'm going to grab my game object. Okay, that made it freak out. Okay, I wonder... Hmm. So it's always facing, look, yeah, it's switching to face down. Huh. So I've got it to switch positions at all. At least now I just need to have it. All right, so let's change this to debug mode. And I want to look at the, not the sprite render. I want to look at the NPC uh, player position. So game object. Oh, I got to lock it to the NPC. All right, so game object. So what does it think the player's position is? All right, so it knows where the player is. So then let's go out of play mode here. And let's make a quick little debug log. So that we, so at the end here, debug.log temp. So let's have it tell us what the temp is. Uh, if you're just joining me, welcome. I'm going through answering a question that was given on Patreon about how to make the NPC face the player when the player enters their boundary. Um, all right, so back here, game object. All right, so zero, zero, negative one. So it's facing zero, zero, negative one. That's weird. Oh, I 
think I know why. So let's unlock this. Let's go back into normal mode. Okay, so this is negative eight. That's why. All right. So let's put this on. I can, Tyrex, I can draw a line. And I, man, I don't use those debug functions anywhere near as much as I should. So we can totally talk about that since I haven't talked about debug functions at all in um, the tutorial series proper. So I'm gonna add a little method here so that I can see the debug stuff without the game running. So void on draw gizmos and let's do debug dot draw line. We're going to start with our transform dot position. And we're going to end with the player position. And let's do debug dot draw. Is it a third argument? Is that an optional third argument to give it the color? Yeah. So I'm going to do color dot blue. Okay. Yeah, so it's negative one in the Z position. So, okay. Let me answer let me answer that question first before I go further with the on drug ismos. So the negative one in the Z position was there because I normalized the vector. So what's happening here, if we look at this in not 2D um, all right, Unity's freaking out here. If we look at this in not 2D, here's this, and then here's my my game object that's standing in for the player. The distance between them, the way that I did it, the distance between them when I put this game object right next to, let's go back into 2D, when I put this game object right next to the player is less than a Unity unit in both the X and the Y directions, but on the Z direction, it's eight point something and because I use mathf.round uh, it changed the x and y uh, to both be zero because they were less than half a unity unit and so those rounded down to zero and then the z direction was you know eight point whatever and then I normalized it which made it one so I I guess I normalized it first and then I rounded and that left the, the Z position to be super long. And so that's why what I did here didn't work. Um, so I guess I should do, instead of a round, I could do ceiling. Uh, ceiling returns the, and then I can always make sure that my, pop back into 2D. My player stand in is at zero on Z, and that my NPC is at zero on Z. Okay. So now I added that debug dot draw line. So it's going to draw a line between where it knows the player is. And by default, it thinks the player is at zero, zero. So if I hit play, it should draw a line between back in the scene. So see how it's. See, now it's drawing a line between. OK, so that's better. OK, it's facing exactly the wrong direction. OK, that time it's facing the right direction. OK, sweet. So OK, zero, zero, zero. So even though I did ceiling, Hi King Cobra, how are you? Welcome. Um, so, oh, I still normalized it, that's why. So let's get rid of this. Actually, let's do normalize after we do ceiling because the distances are always gonna be less than, less than 0.5. So let's do this here, but before we debug log it, I'm not too bad. It's Saturday morning. I have to chaperone the prom later tonight. I'm not excited about that. Uh, all right. So, honestly, I dread every four years. 
the way that we do class advisors at my school every four years you have to like i'm the class advisor for the junior class right now which means that since junior class does prom oh hey look yay well, that almost worked ah which means that since junior class does prom i have to uh chaperone and help them set everything up okay so that's that's pretty much working now cool oh the problem though is i'm setting the direction hmm. and then like that sets their direction until they hit something and i want them to only go left right up and down Okay. I am kind of pleased with how this turned out, though. That's good. <laughs> yeah, keep Jesus between the kids. Leave room for Jesus. Um, <laughs> I don't remember anybody ever saying that to me at my high school prom, which is 20 years ago, but I, uh, <laughs> I'll have to remember that for tonight. Leave room for Jesus. Um, okay, so... Direction equals temp, and then update animation. I'm actually going to, let's store the previous direction. So I'm gonna call this vector three temp two. Actually, let's have this accessible through a bunch of different things. Um, thank you. Wow, I cannot. Ilza Geo Brendan. Um, it would probably be worth adding an idol to the NPC. I just I don't want to right now. <laughs> but um I don't know, I guess I guess my defense of my laziness in not wanting to add an idol is that that's how it worked in the old Final Fantasy, so uh, I don't know. Um I'm gonna create a little holder here, so Vector 3 direction holder. And then I'm going to reset. I'm going to invoke that direction holder. So direction holder is equal to direction. And then when we exit, I'm going to say direction equals direction holder. All right. <laughs> yes, that's a good assumption. They're walking in place because they got stuff to do, man. They got a square they need to to go around. They can't be they can't be bothered stopping and talking to the PC. They got a square they need to explore, man. Come on. All right, so let's. Oh, <laughs> okay. So we're gonna need to update the animation after that too. So after I set the direction back, I'm going to update animation. All right, so let's try this again. Okay, all right, back to scene view, game object. Here. Okay, cool. So if you come at them at a 45 degree, that creates a bit of an issue because it doesn't necessarily know which direction, and that's the blend tree doing it. But I think that's okay. All right, cool. So I'll have to make sure that I archive this stream. I'm recording it too, uh, and then let Ed Den Gaming know I did that. Um, let's see if there are any other questions that were super pressing. So, um, what? I really hate the way that Patreon restructured itself. Like, it's so hard for me just to go to comments. It's easy to go to messages because that's there, but like, I just want to go to my comments. That's all. Um, okay, so boomerang in the future. So I kind of want to redo the whole ability system um, so that it's more extendable. Um, so that like, you would have 
a structure like an enum for abilities. Oh yeah, sure. Patreon would let me hit submit in the comments. Any chance of covering the pivots and why sort to walk behind trees or houses? Yeah, sure, we can do that. So um, let's go to edit, project settings, and graphics. I'm going to set my transparency sort mode to custom axis. And the custom axis is 0, 1, 0, so that we're think it's one it might be negative one so that we're using so that we're using the y-axis wouldn't let you hit submit in the comments huh that's weird well glad you're here then um i'll have to look into that and see what's going on with that so transparency sort axis custom axis so this is in the uh, project settings and then what i'm going to do here I'm gonna actually, okay, so let's demonstrate it with a few. So you see right away that affected this game object because it's on default and then the boundary's on default too. And so if I take this game object and move it down, so here, right there in the center is gonna be where the pivot point for this boundary object is. And so as I move this down, now that its pivot point is below the pivot point of the boundary, it's popping on top. And when its pivot point is below the pivot point of the boundary, it's gonna appear below. So this would be kind of like what you would expect to see with like a tree. But let's do it with like an actual tree here. So I'm gonna leave my player this way and let's just go to our art. And I think I wanna look at objects. I think there were trees in the objects. Oh, there's those itty bitty ones. Um, what's in the overworld sprite editor so there's this tower we can use this tower as an example yeah let's let's do that but i want i don't want to have to make a tile map uh all right fine we'll make it look quick a little time map tile map and then, well, no, because I don't. I want it to have a collider not along the whole thing. So let's let's do it the long way here. Um, so opening up my sprite editor, I'm gonna zoom in, and I'm gonna make this. No, 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 that's not what I wanted you to do. Don't do that. I want this to take up all of this. Okay, so. I want it to be 128 on Y, 48 by 112. 112 probably isn't right. No, 112 is right. Cool. Let's apply. And we're just going to have this one giant sprite for the tower here. And then the other sprites are going to be little sprites too. You can have your sprites overlap like this. Oh, wait, is there? No, there's not. Okay, we're good. We're good. This is fine. We're fine. This is fine except I forgot to remember which one the tower was. 730, all right. We're fine, this is fine, we're fine. It's fine, this is fine, we're fine. <laughs> um, all right, so overworld 730, I'm gonna drag this into the world here. Now its pivot point is here, so I'm going to actually modify overworld 730 so that its pivot point is down at its bottom. So let me go to the sprite editor again. Um, I'm going to grab overworld 730. I'm going to put its pivot in the bottom center. And then I'm going to apply that. So its pivot is at its, its bottom because you would want to sort things based on where their feet are. So like if our player's feet are beneath here, you'd expect the tower to be on top. But if our player's feet are above, or sorry, if our player's feet are below here, you'd expect the player to be on top. But if our player's feet are above, you'd expect the tower to be on top. So let's go out of there. I'm going to treat this tower as one great big object. So I'm just going to rename it tower. And for its, sport, or for its sort point, I'm going to put it as the pivot. I'm going to leave it on default zero. And then my player game object is on the same layer 
in the same order. And I'm going to put its center at its pivot as well. Now I want to grab my square that I made. And I'm going to put its center, bottom center as well. Now this is really annoying when you have to do it for like an entire sprite sheet. I was setting it up last night for, for another project and like, holy cow. But you see how that automatically, and if you combine this with on the tower, like if I add a box collider, so I don't want the tower's box collider to be that big. I want it just to be its physics presence. So I'm going to make it about like that. And then for this little duder, I want their collider to be up here. I actually want their collider to be their feet too. So then if I hit play, and I go to scene, and we look at our little player stand in here. Oh, why are they not colliding with each other? Do I have the player set to be a trigger or something? Oh, because they don't have rigid bodies, that's why. So like, and then you could go around and behind. On top, behind, on top, behind. This only works if you have them on the same sorting layer in the same order and layer, and then you use the pivot. The pivot should be at the same place for all of them. And in general, it works best if the pivot's at the bottom of the object, so. There we go. Hey, where are you going? Get up there. You're not supposed to be able to go out of your little box. What are you doing? Oh, oh, that's why the boundary moved somehow. Oh, because I sorted the square by its pivot. I don't know, have you guys seen that um, Pokemon Detective Pikachu trailer? There's, yeah, I, I think it's neat. It's, it's really easy too. I mean, it's it's not very well explained anywhere on the internet, um, but it, it works pretty well. Um, okay, so now, since I changed the pivot point of the rectangle, it had the same issue the, the player box did, so. All right, cool. So there's two things from Patreon questions. Um, so let's see. Brendan asked about my functioning stoner. All right, cool. I'm looking for more Patreon questions, yeah, to see if there were. Um, I'm going to make that video today to extend the mini-map, so I don't want to go over that right now. Um, let's work the boat. Josh was having a problem with the virtual joystick and is red like it is here so I can't compile. I'm having a problem in a few of the scripts from virtual joystick imports. That might be, I wonder which version of Unity he's using. That might be the issue. Oh yeah, Fuzzy Pikachu. <laughs> the, uh, the, all, all day I've had the one line from that trailer going through my head, which is when uh, Pikachu says, that's so, that's a twist. That's so twisty. That's just been <laughs> going through my head like mad. It's crazy. That's so twisty. A um, little bit of ASMR there for you. Uh, okay, so I'm going to save my script here. I'll, uh, I'll be sure, like I said, I'm recording this and I'm using stream-friendly music now, which is why we keep getting that pretzel rocks pop up in the chat. Um, so hopefully... Not, this video doesn't get muted. Um, does anybody, like, I, I wonder if the patrons would mind if I put this on my YouTube channel too, or maybe I should just leave it on an archive stream or something. I don't know. So do you guys have any questions? If you don't, I'll start working on something else. And if you do get questions, you can bring them up as we go. Um, I'm just going to take a second here. I 
I'd like to think yes to the first question and no to the second question. However, I guess it probably depends on on who's in charge. Because like that, I I just find that movie trailer fascinating. Because like the low toad is just like a bartender. Does that mean does that mean they have a job? Like does the low toad go home, like to an apartment with a family, or or does it go home to a pokeball, and like does it have to give its earnings to its trainer? Like it's just there's a lot of questions that are brought up by that movie. <laughs> I think nobody cares about those questions but me. Um, okay. All right, so any chance of looking into power from discords objects as a tile palette? I don't know what you mean by that. Any chance of looking into powers from discords objects as a tile palette? So powers as a tile palette. Do you mean like, like an inventory? So like you would choose your powers from like an inventory list or something like that? Um, hey there, Brendan. You're you're fine. Um, what I'm doing right now is I was just going through some general questions that showed up on the Patreon. So like I talked about how to make it so that the uh, the NPC faces your player when your player wants to interact with them, and then how to make it so that your player sorts correctly without needing to do a whole bunch of stuff with the sorting layer. Um, I'll archive this stream too if there's something on here that you wanted to see yourself. That's good. I mean, I'm not an expert on Unity by any way. Yeah, the Blue Gamer, it is. It's Ryan Reynolds, the, the voice actor for Deadpool. It would be, I would be fascinated to see a, a Pokemon movie that has an R rating. That would be amazing. Um, but I'm saying that as somebody who was 16 in 1996. So take that for what you will. So, Tyrex, I'm still not sure. Did you mean, as far as powers, like making like an, an inventory panel or something like that where you would select which powers to use? Is that what you're talking about? Oh, okay. Sorry. The username of the Discord. Cool. It was instancing objects from a tile palette rather than cloning. So essentially what he did is he made a prefab brush and there's a few ways that you can do that. So um, I think maybe window package manager, we wanna look at preview packages because there's there's a 2D prefab brush that I think he was replicating or using. I'd have to look to see exactly what his comments were about it, but a prefab brush is a way that you can use a tile palette brush to instead of creating a tile, create an entire object. And I think it's part of the 2D extras or 2D experiments. Um, Okay, so let's Unity 2D Extras. So Unity has a GitHub that they keep that has stuff that isn't even in their packages yet. So yeah, here it is. So 2D Extras, let's download this. So 2D Extras is a repository containing helpful Reusable scripts which you can use to make your games with a slant towards 2D. Feel free to customize the behavior of the scripts to create new tools for your case. I don't know why they don't have this in the actual like tile palette package. There's also 2D tech demos and there's another one. There's 2D experiments, I think. Script over under pipeline. 
the input system, which is going to be in 2019.1. Sprite shapes. I don't know if this is up yet or not. I don't think. I think that's another 2019. They're really putting off 2019.1. There must be something wrong with the scriptable render pipeline, I think. Okay, we got 3D. Um, that's 2D. Yeah, that's the one I just looked at, 2D extras. Endless runner. And it's weird that they have some stuff on their GitHub that isn't in the asset store. You'd think that they would have like, or even in the package manager, even if you go to like preview packages, there's 2D tech demos, uh, sample visual, sh visual shader graph stuff. As I wrote on your Patreon, will you do a tutorial? Hey, um, yeah, we were actually just talking about that before you got here. Um, so what I'm planning on doing as far as like a boomerang goes, that's definitely going to be one of the abilities I'm going to cover. I want to make a flexible ability system so that you guys can expand it in your own way. So like uh, if you've been to my Patreon, there's a guy on there. All right. I'm assuming it's a guy. It could be a girl, a person. Um, I think their name is, they're, they're German. So I'm absolutely going to mispronounce this, but it's like Gungnir or something like that. And he's done a lot of really cool experiments um, with different powers and abilities. So let's actually look. G and G and I. No. G U G and I. No. Okay. Well, maybe it was in the finished work. We got that. Da, 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 da. No, this is all. That's all older. Anyway, so he had a whole bunch of powers that he had made. He had made like a stop time, a fireball. Oh, here he is. Yeah. So, G U N G N I R. All right. So he made a whole bunch of different powers. Like he was the ability to create like a, a circle around your player and then choose things that you wanted to attack. Um, he made this like ball lightning effect. He made this laser. I'd like to go over all of those because like the laser, this is a line renderer and you would use, or not, not yeah, a line renderer. And you would use a line renderer when you're um, creating a hook shot. So if we made just like a general line renderer ability, then we could make uh, children of that inherited ability. Like for example, this fire beam that he made or she, and then we could make the hook shot as part of that. And then also, I think he's got like, go up here. Well, first of all, why didn't that search find it? Um, from G U N G N I R. Does it need to be capitalized? All right, well, whatever. Um, so that way we could do the boomerang as a projectile and then we could reformat the way that we're doing the the arrow as a projectile too and then that way the two of them can just inherit from the same thing so the logic for the boomerang would actually just be to go out and then come back um the all the player needs to do is just create it so we can totally do that and you can have the boomerang interact differently with different objects like if it goes out and hits an object it'll bring the object back with it or if it goes out and hits an enemy you can have it stun the enemy and then come back or grab the enemy and come back. So we can totally do that. That's actually on my plan for the actual tutorial as a whole. Um, I'm planning on doing, I'm planning on doing inventory. Well, so save data is next. Hello. Um, I'm going to say your name wrong. I'm sorry. Erotism. Um, we're going to do a tutorial on save data next, and then we're going to do um, boss battles. Hey, Faker. Hello, thank you. Um, we're going to do a tutorial on uh, save data next, boss battles, inventory, um, abilities, and then dialogue so that we can make an actual dialogue tree. And the dialogue tree, we're, I'm actually going to use Unity's built in animator state machine, which will make things a lot easier. Okay, so here's another lasers, airstrikes, storable casts. Yeah. So this user, um, 
Gung Gungnir. Uh, I'm pretty sure they're German, so I'm sorry if I'm saying it wrong. So like they've got this, um, the boomerang, the time freeze field, the remote explosives, rapid fire projectile. A lot of those things are things that we can do. Um, let me turn the pow the music off so I don't get in trouble for that. So like <clears throat> the little explosive that they put down there, that's actually, that would be the same kind of ability as the projectile because your player's just creating something um, and then setting it down. The slow time field is something we could do. Um, <laughs> those little laser bolts are something that we can do because those all kind of inherit from the same thing like that rapid fire explosive or rapid fire projectile. Those are all things that are very, very similar. Animated tiles, yeah, animated tiles are in the extras. Um, let me go back to where I was. Actually, let's just search for it again. 2D extras. What I would actually do for the fountain though, if it were me, um, dude, I was just there. Okay, so in the 2D extras, we've got tiles animated. Um, I've not done this this way before, but I know that you can do it this way. So like, um, okay, thanks for following me cross Let's Chaos, I think, or X Let's, let's Chaos. Um, but yeah, uh, you can also do like rule tiles. Rule tiles allow you to um, create different rules for things and then follow through. So, all right, I actually need to step away for just one second. I will be right back. Okay, sorry about that. So, um, I've actually never used the animated or rule tiles. I've always just done it by hand. So, we can totally just experiment with. Well, thank you. It's really nice to hear. I'm glad I could help somebody. Sorry if I'm not covering exactly everything you want, but it's nice to hear. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um,. So what we're gonna do here is let's actually just explore these 2D extras that Unity has. So in the 2D extras, we've got a README. Repository for 2018.3 onwards. All right, so we've got a couple different brushes. We've got coordinate, line, random, prefab. This brush instances, places, and manipulates game objects. So. We can do either prefabs or game objects. Tint brush. Group. So animated. Animated tiles are tiles which run through a display of list of sprites in a sequence. Generic visual tile for creating different tile sets like terrain, pipeline, random. And then we got hexagonal and isometric. 
rule override tiles. Okay, so those override a rule tile. We've got grid information and custom rules for rule tile. All right, so if I go into the assets folder here, we've got tile map, we've got brushes. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, we've got scripts. grid information we've got animated tile so what's in the animated tile here we got some scripts we got an animated tile so my cat is snoring behind me this is the cutest thing ever okay so we got these different assets so let's look at the brushes the game object brush I'm just looking over here at the all right so how do I use these then okay <coughs> pardon me how to use 2d Okay, so I do not see any properties on my tiles for time map. Do I have the script to the time map below? The movie here uses a custom tile palette, but how do I actually? You can create a rule tile by going to assets, create rule tile. Oh, okay. So it's like a scriptable object. So I'm going to make a new folder here. Create folder, and I'm going to call this um, tile experiments. Sure. So let's create tiles. Ooh, let's create an animated tile. And we'll call this fountain. Number of animated. Um, okay, so. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Well, I mean, like, there's just a ridiculous amount of information about Unity. You cannot, and it changes so quickly, you can't expect to know everything right away. Unzip the folder. Drag the folder in your projects. Tiles, animated tile for me. Okay. So, fountain, number of animated tiles. Do I just put a number here? Oh, cool. I do. Sweet. Okay, so let's try this out. Let's go to our... I'm going to lock this for a second. Um, let's go to our art. GFX, Overworld, let's unlock this then, I guess. Um, I want to look at that fountain. So, I'm going to make a bigger box here. So this is going to be 48 by 48. And then this one's going to be... Is that 40? Yep. I feel like I made this one too big. Yeah, I did. Down one. Down one. There we go. And then this one's going to be 48 by 48. All right, cool. So I'm going to call this Gumi Zelda. Really? Um. Wow, I used to play for a long, long time, I don't know, 10, 15 years, I used to play A Link to the Past twice a year. Uh, I used to play it in the summer, when my summer break would start, and I'd play it in the winter, uh, when my winter break started. And I got to the point where I could beat the game in about five hours, which I know is nowhere near any kind of record. I really liked Breath of the Wild. That was really good. I just got a Switch this past uh, December, and uh, I played that on on a, a family vacation, and that was it was a lot of fun. I really liked it. It was very different, but I really liked it. I think I think the only one I never beat was Skyward Sword. I played like the first two hours of it, and that was all.
yeah, because I've I've beaten I've beaten Zelda and Link's Adventure and A Link to the Past multiple times. Um, Ocarina of Time, I think three times. Majora's Mask twice. Wind Waker twice. What came after Wind Waker? Twilight Princess. <laughs> Made it turned into a rabbit, yeah. As uh, so this is one of my favorite parts there. I remember, I remember that part. That's this is a good part. I know you don't think so, but it is a good part. All right, so I'm saving these three as fountain one, fountain two, fountain three, and then um, I'm gonna go to my what did I call that folder I just made? Did I call it tile palette? No. Tile maps, tile experiments, that's what I called it. So I'm gonna highlight the fountain here. Um, I'll lock that, GFX. So fountain one is the first sprite, fountain two is the second sprite, and fountain three is the third sprite. Then minimum speed, maximum speed, collider type. Let's give it a grid collider, I guess. Now I think I have to bring the tile palette down and I think I have to add that as a tile to it. Tile experiments. Fountain. Okay, cool. So now, do I just, do I just, oh, I gotta add a tile map to the scene. So 2D object, tile map. And let's put that there. And let's see if that works. And we're all, we're all experimenting together. Okay, so the speed's really slow. Let's set it to three. Does it not update in real time? Let's go 12. It's a little bit too fast. Let's go eight. I wonder if the minimum and maximum speed are there for frame rates. Hmm. Oh, it looks pretty good though. Okay, so there's an animated tile. Why don't we play around with rule tiles here too? So let's make a create tiles. So the brushes, like we've got the prefab brush and the random brush, but let's look at the tiles. Let's make a rule override tile. And I'm just gonna call this test. Oh, I gotta unlock this. All right, so, okay, create tile. Oh, okay, so I need, gotcha. So this is rule tile test. Tyrex, you're fine, I mean, Seriously, I got a really squeaky chair. If anybody wants to ask any questions, feel free. I mean, this is all stuff that people have asked me about before. Um, so it's fine. I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm learning stuff now too. Um, okay, so let's add, whoa, okay. So rule is gonna be fixed. And let's, let's go to our art page here, GFX. Overworld Sprite Editor. So I'm gonna make a rule tile for this. So I'm gonna use 116, 117, and 118 as the top. Um all right, so 116, 117, 118 is the top. So my tile experiment, rule tile test. Select. Let's do 116 and I think it's those Let's add another one this is gonna be 117 and I think this is this this and this I don't know what I just did there I 
That was weird. Um, or maybe it's just these two. Man, that <laughs> that is some some awkward UI. Uh, okay. Let's add another one. Let's do 118 overworld. I feel like it should be not the diagonal down. I think it should just be like this. Or maybe even just this. So like that. And then that. And then... So I want to go overworld. Okay, I already did that. I did that. So like one, two. Overworld. Okay, so there's the three I just did. Um. So that's the opposite. Okay, there we go. So let's do, that's 194. All right, so 194 I think should just be that. And then I think we need 195. That. And then we need one ninety six, which is that. And then we need the sides. So, um, I've so Tyrex, it's gone through like uh, I don't know, twelve different versions so far. So like the first version I made was in Unity and then I made a version in Godot and I didn't like either of those. Um, so I'm starting fresh here with a version in Godot, um, but it might end up going back to Unity. I flip back and forth. I tried a Game Maker version once too. Um, I didn't pay attention to what this was. That was 155. I tried a Game Maker version once too, and I tried a default version. Wait, I want you to be there. I don't. What? Why does this one not have a green check mark? Okay, fine. Mirror you on Y. Um. What do you think about you to me? Will you upload some tutorials? Yeah, Tyrex, I'm using 3.1 on Godot. Uh, since it's stable now, I'm going to continue the match three that I'm doing with just 3.0.6 because I think a couple things break if you take it up to 3.1. Um, maybe not though. And then, uh, yeah, 3.1 for now. I know that um, I follow Juan Lenietsky. I have no idea if I'm saying that correctly on Twitter, and he's been talking about a few things he wants to add to 3.2 and. I almost would prefer if I waited 3.2, but I don't know. We'll see. Uh, and then as far as Brendan, yes, I am planning on making a Udemy course. Um, I started working on it the other day. So the idea is it's going to be like a, a more advanced version, or not a more advanced, a more polished version of the, the Zelda one. And my initial plan was to have it so that it would be... Um, free to patrons who had, you know, subscribed for, I don't know, I hadn't even decided, X number of whatever. And then um, other than that, I don't know, I'd have it probably as inexpensive as I could make it on Udemy. Um, so, your Godot 2D project broke, which one? Okay, so I'm clearly doing this wrong. Um, all right. What if I, what if I do that? No. Um, this.
This is a great idea. Thanks. Um, like I said, I, I started working on it. I have no idea how long it's going to take me. Uh, when summer comes, hopefully I'll get it within like a week of summer vacation coming up, but I don't know. All right, so I'm clearly not doing this roll tile right. So this should be fixed. Why does it keep changing into rotated? What if I just leave that? So it's like it, okay. So it's like it thinks everything is not what it should be. It's almost like I should reverse things. Oh, that made it a lot better all of a sudden. So there are things I really don't like about Puzzle and Dragons. Um, like, uh, oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Tyrex. You can, so if you, if you download 3.0.6, like, it won't open a 3.1 file right away because that project file has been changed, but you can essentially take all the scenes in the scripts and put them into a new project. You'd have to reset the project settings and everything and then all of the uh, connections, but I've done. I've had to do that before. I've opened a project in 3.1, broke it, and then had to figure out a way to get it back to 3.0.6. Um, the Blue Gamer, sorry to finish your question. So uh, I don't want... So Puzzle and Dragons has a lot of things I don't like. I don't like how the enemy encounters work. The enemies are just essentially like, I don't know, sponges for damage. Um, and I don't like that you can move the pieces anywhere. I like the idea of having things set up so that you can just... Okay, good. You know how to fix it. I like um, having it be a bit more strategic. And I like having the enemies have a bit more control over how the game goes. Because boss battles are really cool, um, and I think that it's, boss battles are something you don't see very often in puzzle games. For the most part, boss battles are where the designers can really flex their creativity. Um, so, like, my main idea behind it is boss battles. So not this, but this. I'm really confused about how this rule tile system works. And I could very easily just search it again. Not this, not this. Well, see, now this is better. Okay, weird. Let's see, now it's gonna fill in. So do I have to tell it? But see, it doesn't let me tell it not this. That's not the center. So do I have to then do like, do I have to force it to be just that? This is weird. I'm sure like once I understand what's going on here, it'll make sense, but holy cow, the UX design of this is not good. I think I see why this isn't part of the tile map packages yet.
So in Unity, um, I've never used the animation state machine as the character state machine before, but that's not because I don't like doing it that way. Uh, in Unity, I've only like I've only ever scripted a state machine and then just used the scripted state machine. Oh no no, the Woo Gamer, you're fine. Um maybe I just haven't played enough of it. I don't know. Yes, Tyrax, the goal of a rule tile is to do auto tiles. So <laughs> it's just holy cow. Um I don't think I'm a dumb person, but maybe I'm just being dumb right now. How to use Unity Auto Tiles from 2D Extras. I know Magic Panda in the Discord was talking about this. Um Oh, there's a video. I hate it when you just want, I just want like a, an article. I don't want, I do not want that. Unity's new time lapse system, RPG Maker. How to use the tiles from 2D Extras. 2D Extras, 2D Extras, Master Unity using time lapse. Okay. Um, uh, Tyrex, I think I didn't finish answering your question. So I, I usually do a scripted state state machine and then I'll do the animator states separately and have some interaction between them. I have seen people use the animator state machine as their entire state machine and I've not heard bad things about that but I have no idea what it would do for like optimization or anything. Um, okay, so rule tile test. Okay, so now it's just doing that one. Uh, um, so you can have it output an animation, that's interesting. And then would the animation come from, oh, you tell it the speed and the size. So like if I said three, well, that's kind of cool. Okay, so I do care. I want it to not be this, but be that. Let's do the... Hmm. Let's set this back to zero. And back to single. Um. Hmm. Oh, is it because I didn't set the default sprite? Is that what it is? And then, should I just remove that one? So like, say, not this, not this, not this. Can I just remove this one? So I know what the default tile is. Yeah, I don't know how this is supposed to work. I'll have to do some reading up. Um, but we talked about, we made the animated tiles work. So you can just like plop this little bugger down. So 
So I'd have to set the, you see how that, that one is kind of over it? It's because its center is above the center of this. So to fix that, I'd have to go to my, my art, GFX, fountain one, fountain two, and fountain three. And I need to put their pivot points at the bottom. So here, this should be pivot bottom center here, pivot bottom center, and here, pivot bottom center. And that should make it appear on top of all of those. Yeah, the animated tiles are cool. Um, and maybe it's just that I'm too dumb to get how uh, to get how the auto tiles are supposed to work. Why are you doing that? Oh, because I grabbed. Duh. Oh, no. Hmm. Well, now I don't know what's going on. All right, so I totally screwed it up. <laughs> Sorry, it's, it's Saturday. I'm not 100% here. Um, all right, so let's see. Are there any other questions? Anything else anybody wants to go over? Uh, we talked about how to make it so that the NPC faces you. We talked about what the how to make the tiles sort correctly automatically without having to do a whole bunch of code. We looked at adding animated tiles for the fountain, and then you could use that for like the, the waves and stuff too. Um, let's see what else. And then I messed around with the rule tiles for like 15 minutes. Yeah, it would need to be a lower layer. So what ideally you would do is you'd have, so you'd have a tile map and this, I think this is how I did it in the tutorial. So this would be grass and then all of this would be here. Uh, so like, we'll see, oh gosh, see it was almost working there. All right, well, whatever. So all of this would be there, and then you'd duplicate this. And this will be, say, decorations with, no, let's just do decorations. And then we can add the collision ourselves. Let's put this, so again, for having that sort order work correctly, we're gonna put this on a different layer. We're just gonna put this at like negative two, or we could put it Grass and extend tile base interface for the tile palette. What do you mean, extend tile base interface for the tile palette? I'm looking at your link right now, Tyrax. Okay, it's not loading on my phone, so let's try it here. Microsoft Netflix. 
I'm gonna try loading it again. Well, I mean, it's it, it might be too much for the Q and A, but it's definitely an idea for something in the future. I know that there's a way that you can extend the tiles to add scriptable actions to them. And like I said, oh yeah, we haven't even looked at like the game object brush yet. So like, okay, I still haven't been able to see what your your link says yet, so I'll try it again in a minute. Um, but if we went to the tile experiments, create brushes. Let's so we got let's make a prefab brush. And so the prefabs that we want to have in here, let's put one. And then, uh, what are some prefabs I can use? So I'm going to lock this for a second. Let's look at the enemies. Let's use the rock projectile. So if I go to my tile experiments, my prefab brush, can I just pull this? How do I use this now? Default brush. Oh, there we go. Game object brush. Um, let's do. So the high level approach was, um, I might as well talk about that. So the idea was you would have, so like in the scripts, we'd make a new folder. We'll call this powers. And then inside powers, we'd make a C sharp script for just like the default power. And then in here, we would make different powers that inherit from that. So like you'd have a power that uses a line renderer or a power that uses a game object. So create C sharp script. Um, if I wanted to put an image or the dialogue during the game, how would I do that? Oops, we could not find that page. Hey there, uh, Frisbee86, thanks for joining. Okay, let me try that one more time, Brendan. Open an app. Okay, that's not coming up. So apparently the links and stuff aren't working like they should. Let's try it from here. Yeah, so I guess you've taken a wrong turn. Okay. Um, well, hold on. Let me finish answering um, Tyrax's question first, Brendan, and then we'll take a look at yours. So, like, you have default power and then line renderer power, and line renderer power would inherit from default power. And then, like, the, this would require a line renderer somewhere. Require component type of line renderer and then you could do stuff with it so like a line renderer power would be a hook shot so this would be like the base class for it and then you can extend that by making a new uh, power script and call this hook shot and then hook shot would inherit from line renderer power or you could do like laser blast that does like a beam it's classic OOP inheritance. It's not nested prefabs. Um, I mean, you could make it with nested prefabs, but like, okay, so like the line renderer power, I don't know why I closed Visual Studio. There's a few things that you'd need. So you'd need uh, a line renderer. You'd want to have some sort of effect that's at the end of the line renderer. So like, so this is the line renderer. You'd have a serialized field private game object and we'll call this like end 
effect. So for like a laser, this would be like a little animated effect to show that it's hitting something. Whereas if it were a hook shot, this would be the actual hook itself. Okay, now it works. <laughs> oh, that? Yeah, that's, that's pretty easy. Um, the reason I didn't go over anything like that in this tutorial is I didn't have any art for it uh, that would fit it. But So like all you would have to do... Okay, let me finish with this, Brendan, and then I'll get to that. Um, so you have your end effect, and so then on your hookshot power, the end effect would be the hook. And if it's the laser, the end effect would be like a little fire thing or something like that, or a little particle system to show that it's hitting something. Um, and then that way, your line renderer power can take stuff from your default power. So your default power can have like a damage enemy void in it, and then hookshot or line renderer could call that and then you could have another tree of powers where you would do like a C sharp script and you'd call this projectile power. And then your projectile power could be an arrow, a fireball, it could be three fireballs, it could be a lightning bolt, all kinds of stuff like that. And then you could have um, another, and you can call this like drop power or something like that, where you would drop something like a bomb. So like, drop power and then a child of drop power would be bombs um i guess the cane of samaria would count as that the one where you throw the platforms around um and i mean you can just kind of go crazy with it you could even have like an area of effect power where you're instantiating an area and you are affecting all of the colliders in that area with a certain script attached to it so i mean this is how you would you'd make something easily extendable by this because then you could have, I don't know, you could have 10 different line renderer powers and all of those line renderer powers would have the same basic functionality. You're going to create a line renderer that goes from your character out and then you're going to create an effect at the end. And then when you're creating an effect at the end, you're damaging your, your enemy or, I don't know, you're pulling it towards you or something like that. Does that make any sense? And I mean, then you could do all kinds of things to juice that up. So you could make it so that you have a screen shake effect when it hits something. So like with the effect itself, you could have a screen shake that you're calling. You could also, um, what else could you do? Screen shake, you could have a little um, shader effect where there's like a little disruption there, almost like a heat disruption. And you could even have that go on the whole material of the line. That'd be pretty cool. Um, there's all kinds of stuff that you could do and then you're just essentially decorating the main one so yeah I mean this is just OOP inheritance here um, okay so Brendan you asked about adding a portrait so let's say that we have um, this one doesn't have the little head thing that I made by cutting off the thing from the thing so let's actually just make a quick little head. Uh, let's go to GFX. Let's go to character. And then I'm going to make a sprite editor. I'm going to make a quick little head. So I'm just going to, nope, nope, not what I want to do. I want to make a new one. Let's actually use one of the animations I'm not using. So here, I can use the, I can use this. So this isn't going to look quite right but it'll be close enough. I'm going to call this, come on. Oh. Yeah, so yeah, I mean, if it were me, and I'm, I'm going to go over how I would do this relatively soonish, but um, I would try to focus on what every single line renderer power has and have the line renderer script only have that. And then if you're making something that has similar functions to another one, then you'd have it inherit, or you could even just use polymorphism for it. Um, great, so this is portrait uh, apply. So if we go to our scenes, 
And I want to go to my overworld. We'll save that. My little testing ground here. Um, so if I go to player, actually not player, canvas. This is before the version that's on my PC is before I optimized it. So this is still a great big mess. Um, so we're going to go to canvas. Let's go to the dialog box. Let's make this active and let's double click it. So what you would add to your dialog box here, you've got your text and then the box itself. Let's make a new child, uh, UI um, image. I'm gonna put this up here and I'm gonna anchor it to the upper right. Cause you can't, and I'm actually gonna drag two of these anchors over here. So it's always gonna be kind of in this upper left place. And then uh, let's let's use for the sprite um, GFX objects, and then in here I want the the one that I've been using for for all of this. I want 128. I want objects 128. Actually, let's not do 128. Let's do let's do this one here. So I'm gonna pull this in. Pull this up and pull this down. I'm really, I don't know, it's probably pretty bad. This needs to go over a little bit more. Okay, so this is objects 130. Let's apply that. And then if I take a look at my image I just made, we'll call this portrait background. And then as a source image, objects 130 and then I want this to be yeah I want it to be sliced let's go to the blue handles that actually doesn't look too bad let's draw the anchors over here and bring this up all right cool now as a child of this I'm gonna make another image it's a UI image and then I'll call this like portrait or something now, just like when you uh, set the dialogue, so if I look down here at my scene, I wanna look at my sign here, and the sign knows what the dialogue box is, it knows what the text is, and it knows what dialogue it wants to give. I'm just gonna modify the sign really quickly to give it an image to pass in as well. So, Yes. So I'm going to add a public sprite and we'll call this dialog image. Um, yeah, I should probably do that as a serialized field, but it's fine. Um, so then in here, dialog box set active. And then I want to make another reference to the dialog image. And then this is going to be dialog sprite instead. So then in addition to setting the text, I'm going to set the dialog image dot sprite is equal to dialog sprite. And then I'll save that and down here. I'll let that compile for a second. Um, okay, and so now it wants a sprite, and so I'm going to give it that little um, little thing I just made from the character. So the portrait. So now I don't want to pause. So now if we go, oh hey, it doesn't know what the image is though. So I forgot to turn that off too. So it doesn't know what the image is. The image is this. And then let's turn the dialog box off. And then when we go up, it'll dynamically set that. Now, oh geez, I forgot. Scriptable objects. I wanna look at player stuff. 
position should be 15, negative 8. So then if we play this, ta -da. so now if I go up here, I get my little, my little image. Now what you could do too is just in case there's not an image you want to have, so like dialog box set active true, dialog text equals dialog, we're going to say if dialog sprite is not equal to null, then we'll do this. Otherwise, um, and let's actually also public game object uh, dial dialog image parent and set that parent inactive. Dialog image parent dot set active false. Um, and then here we'll set it because we we might have set it inactive. We want to make sure it's active. It should be dialog image parent dot set active true. So if we go back here, our sign. And this is probably not the best way to do this. I'm sure there's an easier or a, a more elegant way I could come up with, but this is just kind of off the top of my head. Um, so portrait background is the parent. So if I go back to my sign here and I set this to none, I should see that dialog background not show up. And you can switch it back and forth through code just like this. So I should see it not show up this time. But then if I switch it to be the portrait, nope, portrait, then when I go up here, I see the portrait. So there you go. Um, yeah. Any other any other questions we got here? I feel like I went through a lot of that stuff really really fast so if you guys have questions feel free to let me know and don't I mean anybody asking questions is fine unity is a, a weird thing and I, I'm by no means an expert but yeah no worries man I'll archive this stream so you can watch it back if you want to if I went through that too fast and like I said I'm sure there's a more elegant way to do that but that's the way I thought about it. Oh yeah, and now that I made that change too, the other thing you want to make sure that you do is override your canvas to apply all the changes so that then if you're using the same canvas in another scene, um, all these changes will still apply to it. <laughs> Thank you, Faker. Like I said, I'm far from an expert. So if nobody has any questions. I just wanted to, again, show people kind of what I was working on here. So this was my idea for Kitty Quark is what I'm calling it because that's the name I came up for, with for the little heroine. I made a few um, little sketches of her. I think I shared in the work in progress. So the idea is um, rather than moving the elements directly, so rather than swiping, your player has an actual piece on the board and you would move your player around. Uh, right now I'm using the keyboard, but ideally I'd add a swipe controller as well. 
so that you could uh, swipe stuff around. And then once you get down to zero moves, the board is evaluated, matches are taken away, things collapse, new matches are checked, and so on. And then you either get money, which you can use for buying upgrades or things, um, direct damage, which is represented by these swords, or you get um, mana in one of three different categories, either fire, earth, or water. And then the mana can be used to spend spells. If the image should change in the next dialogue. So back here, then um, you would change the portrait background. So, I mean, if you're going back and forth, like so your player is talking to the NPC, your, oh yeah, I don't have the NPC in this one. Your NPC would have its own background image. And then if your player, like say you hit space and it was your player's reaction, then you would change that image in the same way. So like your player would need to know what the portrait is, or you'd have to have like a default player portrait or something. And then when you hit space again or something, you could do the, the other person's image. I'm planning on going more in depth into this because this is getting past the simple dialogue step um, and getting towards the multiple dialogue step. So my ideal plan was to use Unity's uh, animation state machine and state machine behaviors to set uh, all of these things so that we could create branching dialogues. And that's going to come, I don't know, like around May. My plan is to do save data, boss battle, inventory, um, abilities, and then dialogue. So if you need to switch between different pictures, like I said, you can just change it in the script the same way. Okay. I'm going to hang out for like another five minutes here, guys, and then I'm going to, I got to go to Sam's Club and do some grocery shopping. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in Discord or uh, on Patreon. I haven't been on Discord very much the last couple of days because, like I said, it's been really busy and I have to do prom tonight, which I'm not looking forward to. Uh, but other than that, yeah. Uh, so, so far today, we've gone over making the NPCs face the player. We've gone over um, making the sprites sort correctly. We've looked at animated sprites. Um, we started to look at rule tiles, uh, and then we looked at dialogue portraits for the backgrounds and stuff. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask. And I'm in the basement right now, so my dehumidifier is going off in the background. And I know that that's probably bugging some people. Or actually, do I have my... Ooh, you probably can't even hear it. I have my gate set up correctly. Nice. I probably have my background audio too loud, though. You're right, Tyrex. Um, it's it's just me. Like debug draw stuff is just something I I don't usually do, but it would be so helpful if I did. So like if we just went to even just this quick little log here. So let's show this. If I open this little duder up, yes, and just added like a void on draw gizmos. Um, Debug dot draw. How do you draw a circle? So we can do draw right, draw line. Let's actually just do draw line. Debug dot draw line. And then we can do transform dot position. Is it player? Stop that. So target dot position and then we can do like color dot blue oh it helps if you spell color correctly 
So like even just doing that, if I jump back into Unity now, I'll have those nice debug lines and it shows you that they know they know where it is. We could even do debug draw. Well, you can do debug draw sphere, I think. But see immediately we have lines from from the enemies that can do it directly to the player. Uh, does this one not know what its target is? Is that why? So like I mean that alone is helpful. Yeah, it doesn't know what its target is. That's why it doesn't doesn't have that. So if I just told it its target is the player, it should automatically draw that. Yeah. Why doesn't why doesn't it know what its target is? Oh, be, am I setting it in start method? Is that what's going on? Yeah, I am. That's not the best way to do it. Um, so like that can be really helpful. Like if I hit play now, <laughs> I can go over to my scene view and actually let's dock my scene view down here. So as I move around, you can see they know where I am. Like it's, it's just, it's really helpful. Oh, hey, look, what are you doing up there? Who are you? Oh, that's why you're there. That's the turret log. I never gave it a position. That's why it's up there. Hey, the blue gamer. Um, what do you mean? The so like you can't make the sound for the UI buttons? We can go through that right now if you want to. I have a little bit more time. So here, let's switch over to Godot really quickly. Um, I'm just gonna make a scene here. Let's get a 2D scene. Let's add a texture button. this in the middle and then for the texture did I make up some UI I did let's do oh I gotta open the textures let's do this okay um, all right so I'm just gonna save this as like test and I'm going to make a quick little script for it. Yeah, I'll just put it there. And then let's save this. We'll just save it there. Okay. Okay. No, I, I see what you're saying. So, um,. Sorry, I'm just thinking for a second. Um, I don't have that tutorial on this on this PC. Otherwise, I'd go through it with you right now. But um, so the I know I know that you said that you know that the logic is simple. So the idea is you'd have another button, and you'd connect its pressed signal with the root and then when the press signal is pressed instead of changing the music you would change the sound so you'd or vice versa so you change music on to music off or sound on to sound off uh, it's not a bad idea for me to go through that now that I, I see why you would be confused on how to do that that totally makes sense yeah it's not a bad idea to go through that Okay, so I'll definitely do that in the future then, the blue gamer. Yeah, I'll, I'll add that to the list of stuff that we're going to do for it. Because it'll take, it'll take too long because I don't have it already set up on this version. And I don't have the actual 
Godot tutorial up here, but yeah, I'll, I'll add that. Okay. So, um, yeah, I think we're getting pretty close to time. So, if you guys have any last questions, feel free to ask. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to do that. If you guys have any last questions, feel free to ask. Um, otherwise, like I said, I'm going to go run some errands and stuff and do prom later tonight. No, I, I get what you're saying. Um, the blue gamer. Uh, I, I will definitely add it to my list of things for Godot. Uh, Brendan, yeah, you can. So you would just, there's, Unity even has a video player um, component. So like, if you were to make a new, uh, let's make a new canvas. And as this, we want to make, where is it? Is it here or is it from the component menu? No, video. Yeah, video player. So, like the, the video player here is an actual object in the scene. And I can make this take the whole thing. And I can... Let's make a UI image. We want raw image so we can do a render texture. And then the video player is going to draw onto that render texture. Um, if it horizontally skip and drop, wait, play on awake. Yeah, and so you can just like turn this on or turn it off through the timeline. That way you can play like a pre-rendered cutscene or a little animation or something. Okay, um, I'm gonna, gonna start shutting stuff down here. Oh wait, that's not what I meant to do. Yeah, that's what I meant to do. Uh, I'm gonna start shutting stuff down. Thanks very much for coming. Um, Y'all are awesome, and I appreciate every last one of you. Um, so yeah, uh, the Blue Gamer, I'll, I'll definitely do that. Uh, as far as the, the uh, difference between the sound and the music button, um, I see why you would be confused about that. So we'll do that. And yeah, if you guys have any questions, uh, feel free to ask. Uh, Faker, E, thank you very much for coming. Brendan, thanks for coming. Tyrax, the Blue Gamer, you guys are great. So um, yeah, I guess everybody have yourselves a wonderful day.